Now that you know what salicylate does to the body, in this MedMastery lesson, we'll cover how to save a patient's life during acute toxicity. Returning to our patient, we know that he took aspirin at a dose of 35,000 milligrams two hours ago by mouth. Looking at our ABC roadmap, the airway can be affected by prolonged hyperventilation, making the patient tired. Their breathing can be supported with oxygen, but let them hyperventilate. This will help prevent worsening acidemia. Behavior control isn't usually a problem, although these patients can have confusion and other mental status changes that should concern you for a potentially fatal overdose. Remember to check their blood sugar, especially since they are vomiting and may be confused. Circulation is critical because these patients almost always have significant fluid losses from vomiting and breathing fast, so giving intravenous fluids is essential. Because of the potassium changes that may happen, plan to get an electrocardiogram. It's important to remember that these patients breathe fast. As a result, they release excess carbon dioxide to increase the blood pH. On an arterial blood gas test, we often see a mixed picture that shows an elevated pH, low carbon dioxide, and low bicarbonate, which makes sense because acute toxicity causes both respiratory alkalosis and metabolic acidosis. However, when the patient is tired and can no longer hyperventilate, their pH will decline. The pH in these patients must stay above 7.4 to prevent uncharged salicylic acid from entering the central nervous system. Sodium bicarbonate and potassium are two effective treatments to keep the blood pH elevated. Giving boluses of sodium bicarbonate can rapidly raise the pH, but let's explore how potassium does this too. As the kidney filters out bicarbonate ions to balance the blood pH during the initial stage of toxicity, it also filters out potassium and sodium. Patients will also lose potassium through vomiting. So we need to give potassium with our intravenous fluids, but it's about more than just replacing a lost electrolyte. Giving potassium will actually help keep the pH elevated. This is because the kidney responds to a reduction in potassium by reabsorbing potassium via an H K ATPase pump, and in doing so, it releases hydrogen ions to make the urine more acidic. So when we give potassium, it slows down this pump. As a result, it slows down the release of hydrogen ions and promotes the retention of bicarbonate. This ultimately keeps salicylate in its negatively charged form, allowing it to be released from the kidney and excreted in the urine. When giving intravenous fluids to help replace fluid and electrolytes, and sodium bicarbonate to keep the blood pH elevated, it's important that they contain dextrose. This is because salicylates decrease glucose levels in the central nervous system, despite the bloodstream levels usually being normal. This is especially important to remember if the patient is confused or has other signs of central nervous system toxicity. And make sure to monitor the urine output. The goal is two to three milliliters per kilogram of body weight per hour of urine output. The target urine pH is 7.5 to 8.5. There isn't a true antidote for salicylate toxicity, which is why our ABCs are so important. But activated charcoal is highly effective in these patients. Salicylates can actually delay stomach emptying, giving the drug more time to be absorbed. And with a large overdose, the pills may stick to each other, further delaying absorption. Some experts say that you can give activated charcoal two hours or even longer after an acute salicylate overdose, and you can also repeat the dose every four hours. Dialysis is also a very effective tool to manage the acid-base imbalance, electrolyte changes, and kidney overload. So how do you know when to use dialysis? Well, similar to acetaminophen, salicylate levels can be detected with a blood test. In an acute overdose, a level greater than or equal to 90 milligrams per deciliter, regardless of symptoms, should prompt you to start dialysis. Other reasons include a blood pH of less than or equal to 7.2, any evidence of kidney injury, any neurologic symptoms such as confusion, and fluid buildup in the lungs. In the emergency department, our patient received 50 grams of activated charcoal. He was given medications to reduce his nausea and vomiting, and intravenous fluids containing potassium, sodium bicarbonate, and dextrose. His salicylate level two hours after the overdose was 100 milligrams per deciliter, so a nephrologist was consulted to start dialysis. 
His symptoms resolved, and his salicylate level was undetectable after 36 hours. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.